for more on what's ahead at tomorrow's meeting of Presidents Trump and Xi, let's bring in Senator John Barrasso. He is the chairman of the Republican Conference. And, Senator, it's great to see you today. Thanks, Becky. So what do you think? Well, I think it's a positive. I think that there's going to be good work done, but it's not a done deal yet. But I know that American workers benefit from smart trade. I know that there are great opportunities, but we know that China cheats. If it hadn't been for the tariffs, these discussions wouldn't even be happening. Look, China steals our intellectual property. They limit their markets uh, to, to our, 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 our production. All of these things make it harder for Americans. So the tariffs matter. Yes, is it important to have them? Yes, but they're not, in, not an end in itself. We need to get the solutions because we all benefit, I think, globally from more trade. You know, uh, recently there, there seems to be bipartisan support for what President Trump has done, at least in terms of cracking down on China and playing hardball because of all the evidence that they have not uh, played on a level playing field. Um, we are getting into uh, deeper into an election year. Um, you are talking about things starting to heat up. And, and, and I know that you hear back from some of your constituents, too. I wonder if you can just tell us how deep you feel support is at this point, or if you think that more people are hoping that there's a deal reached sooner rather than later. Well, I'll be in Wyoming this week at the Cody Stampede, the 100th anniversary there, traveling the state of Wyoming. What I know I'm going to hear is people say, hey, we have products in Wyoming we want to sell overseas. Our number one cash crop is beef. But on top of that, we have trona, we have natural gas, we have coal, and we want to have international markets for those products. Our economy benefits when we're more actively engaged in trade. There's huge support for President Trump, I think, all around Wyoming and around the country, and when you compare that to what we saw last night at the debate, I mean, previously it was Joe Biden that said, hey, China is nothing to worry about. China is our biggest long-term threat. When we can cooperate with them, we should. When we need to compete, we must. Uh, and if it comes to confronting them and things like Huawei, we have to do that as well. You know, it has gotten a little more complicated when you start wrapping in issues like Huawei and trying to figure out how much of that is going to be a trade issue and how much of that is a security issue. Also, when you start to consider things like North Korea and Iran, things that uh, President Xi of China is now saying, hey, we can help you on those issues, it's hard to separate the economic from, uh, from the real threats that we're facing at this point, too. So how do you kind of weed through that? Well, number one, to me, Huawei is a national threat. It is not something that to be used as a bargaining chip. Uh, in trade. But, but I think you're right. You have the G20, you have a number of, com of countries there that put it represents 86% of the economy of the world. You mentioned uh, Iran. Iran is a global threat. Iran with a nuclear weapon makes the entire world less safe, less secure, less stable. So we need cooperation from around the world. Look, the sanctions and what President Trump is doing is right. They are biting. It's great to have additional cooperation. And I imagine the president is going to look for that as well. But I, I want to bring that up directly with China. I mean, President Xi has said that Huawei needs right. to be part of the negotiations if they are to move forward on trade, that he wants a solution on that. He's also said that he can help with North Korea. And, and with North Korea, China is probably the most important player. They'd be the only one who could really put pressure on North Korea to make them do more uh, to open up and to maybe stop being so threatening. How, how well, do you take those two issues? Because obviously we want a better situation when it comes to trade. But when you look at real threats, uh, North Korea being the most immediate, and then the potential for Huawei, uh, if, if that has to be on the table from the Chinese perspective, how, how would you sort that out, Senator? Well, I think that, that Huawei is a true threat. It could be a Trojan horse in our, if it's in, in our uh, economy and all of our communications and in our, uh, what we have in terms of the computering in the computer world. But realistically, that cannot be used as a bargaining chip. We do need to see China take a more active role in what they do in terms of North Korea. So much of the money going into North Korea comes directly from China. I think China should have been much more active in helping prevent North Korea from nu using nuclear weapons and the missiles. Because in terms of the geography, there is the shared border, and China is at risk as well from North Korea. They need to realize it's in their own best interest to tamp down activities in North Korea. Senator, I hate to relitigate the, the Huawei issue, but I, the thing that concerns me is I think it's going to be the pivotal issue in this conversation for President Xi. I can't see it any other way. And I look to what took place with ZTE and some of the measures we, that we put in place, including our own people, by the way, literally in their offices. Could you see us thread the needle? Is there a way to use Huawei as 
uh, I hate to say a pawn in this uh, trade war, but some kind of uh, situation where where we deemed Huawei not a, a national uh, a threat, uh, security threat? Well, and for that, you're going to need to be visiting also with the people from national intelligence and what we know what Huawei is doing. But you're right in terms of where we're seeing Huawei increasing its influence in our NATO countries, in terms of what they're talking about doing in England. So Huawei is having a bigger presence around the world. To me, that's still a great concern and a threat. And, but, there's, but there's nothing that we could do in the same way that we did with ZT. And I don't know if you were ever comfortable, really, with, with how ZT was ultimately handled. No, I, I'm not completely. I have great concerns about Huawei and the threat that it would provide to our country. Uh, Senator, uh, just shifting gears to last night, um, mm -hmm. who would be the, the most formidable, uh, after you watch, who do you think would be the most formidable uh, opponent for uh, Trump-Pence or, or opponents for, for Trump-Pence, do you think? And who do you, who do you think it will be? And, and, uh, who would you wish it to be? Do you, I mean, do you wish it yeah. with Bernie well, or Elizabeth uh, Warren? I wish for a strong economy and a great future for America. And when I look at all of those candidates, both nights, this sharp left turn, they're careening over the liberal cliff. It's, the, it's a hundred yard dash to the left. You took every hand went up about free health insurance for illegal immigrants. People want to tear down the barriers, get rid of a border do more to invite more illegal immigrants to come to the country and say it's not even illegal to do it. You're, you're, people you're, are saying we want to raise you're taxes. You're avoiding the this questions is like hurt the people our... last night. You're avoiding my question. You didn't answer me. I, I might have, this might as well be a debate. Uh, Every, a I'm happy to run against, I'm happy for President Trump to run against any of them because to me they're all essentially the same. One size fits all health care with higher costs so people have to wait longer for worse care. They're all the same in terms of the Green New Deal penalizing our economy for some pipe dream that's not going to work to actually uh, deal with the issues that we face. Do you think it's going to be all a, the same? A, a They're all in the, the same clown car. Going to be a member of the old guard or the new guard uh, as, the, as the main? Do you think it's going to be Biden, Senator? Well, I, right now he is leading the polls. He has lots of support out there, but you have this passing of the torch that they talked about. There are a lot of new younger candidates. And Biden wasn't the oldest candidate on the stage either. So you have a number of candidates in their, in their 70s. You have a number of younger candidates. They're all the same in terms of this whole liberal group of wanting to raise taxes, wanting to, wanting to tear down the border walls, wanting to deal with what in the economy in ways that I believe will hurt the economy. They want yeah. bigger government, more regulations, higher taxes and less freedom for American citizens and bringing other people to the front of the line. The I don't think that helps. Senator, That's forty percent of the people probably like that stuff and then you got forty that don't and twenty in the middle that aren't sure what the hell's happening. Senator, how, how should age be considered? It's an interesting question both because because of the age of, of Biden and some of the others on the stage as well as our own president. Well people get to make a decision. Everybody gets a vote. That's the beauty of America so people can choose who they think is best. We're not going to even start voting for another about seven months in terms of the primary process. So what we're seeing, I think, is a clear delineation between a president, President Trump, who wants to grow right. the economy, knows how to do it with tax cuts, regulatory relief, unleashing American energy, and this whole group of Democrats, to me, this sharp left turn of focusing on penalizing America and American citizens and a one-size-fits-all, which really won't work for America, whether it's health care, whether it's the environment, immigration, all of these issues, I think they're absolutely wrong.